Okay, so get this right. We're diving into this uh, this conference, and it's called, get this, Make Women Great Again. Make Women Great Again. Yeah, you heard that right. It's an attention-grabbing title, that's for sure. Totally. So okay. naturally, we have to unpack this. And what makes it even more interesting, it's, uh, it's a conference for women, but... But? Run entirely by men. Oh, okay. Now that's a fascinating twist. Right. It's like, who are these guys to say how to make women great again? And what does that even mean? It definitely raises a lot of questions. Whose vision of greatness are we talking about here? Exactly. And that's what we're going to dig into. Now, our main source material today is this YouTube video, right, from 21 Studios. And they're covering a speech from this very conference, which they call the 22 Convention. Okay, so who are the figures behind this whole thing? All right, so the 22 Convention is founded by this guy, Anthony Dream Johnson. He's the one who came up with that Make Women Great Again slogan. Catchy. I'll give him that. Right. And then the keynote speaker, this is where it gets really interesting, it's Jesse Lee Peterson. He's a conservative radio host. You might know him from his show, The Fallen State. Peterson's an interesting figure. His views tend to be deeply rooted in traditional gender roles, you know, pretty strict hierarchy and all that. You hit the nail on the head. And in this speech, he really lays out his whole worldview when it comes to men, women, what he sees is wrong with modern society, the whole nine yards. And this is a perspective we see echoed in certain corners of society, often fueled by anxieties about changing gender roles, you know, a sort of nostalgia for a time when things seemed simpler, more defined. Totally. So are you ready to hear some of Peterson's main arguments? Lay it on me. Okay, so buckle up, because here's where it gets interesting. Peterson, he comes right out and says it. Modern society has completely flipped what he believes is God's intended order. And he's very specific about this order. He says it goes, God, Christ, man, woman, children. Ah, oh, yes. The classic patriarchal pyramid. Men positioned as the divinely ordained leaders, women relegated to a secondary role. It's a framework that, in today's world, many would argue is at odds with the values of equality, individual autonomy, that kind of thing. Exactly. And because of this supposed reversal, Peterson claims men are losing their identity, becoming, and I quote, yeah. Like little women. Little women. Notice the loaded language there. It minimizes, even infantilizes, subtly implies weakness, as if any move toward greater equality for women necessitates some loss or diminishment of men. This idea of a zero-sum game between genders, it pops up a lot in these sorts of arguments. Yeah, and that whole men are becoming less masculine thing, it's a recurring theme in his speech. Now hold on to your hats because this is where Peterson really goes for it. According to him, all of this is making women utterly miserable. Why? Because now they're forced to, in his words, control these, quote, emasculated men, which supposedly goes against their natural instincts. It creates a classic double bind, doesn't it? Women are simultaneously blamed for controlling men while also being told they're inherently incapable of true leadership or authority. It's a no-win situation. And it gets even, well, more complex, I guess. Peterson, he goes on to say that this unhappiness that women are feeling, it all stems from, get this, anger. But not just any anger, anger directed at men and, here's the kicker, it's misplaced anger. Misplaced. Okay, I'm intrigued. How so? Well, according to Peterson, it all goes back to, you guessed it, their mothers. He says women are harboring all this resentment towards their moms, and it's this, like, unresolved anger that's making them unhappy in their relationships with men. So we've gone from blaming women for controlling men to blaming mothers for, well, everything, it seems. It's interesting how he links these personal, emotional struggle, you know, resentment, anger, to these massive societal shifts. It's like he's saying women's anger is the root cause of men losing their way, of marriages falling apart, the whole nine yards. It's a pretty bold claim, and I can't help but wonder... If that's the diagnosis, what's the cure? What's Peterson's solution to all this misplaced female anger? I'm almost afraid to ask. Well, get ready for this. Peterson's answer, in a nutshell, is forgiveness. He really hammers this point home, saying that women need to forgive their mothers to heal this anger, and only then can they finally find happiness and peace. He even says, and I quote, Once you forgive your mother and forgive your father for not being there for you to protect you, everything will change. You will overcome your fears, your doubts. You will be happy to be you again. Wow. So forgive your mom, forgive your dad, and poof, all your problems magically disappear. It's a very tempting narrative, isn't it? This idea that there's a simple solution to these incredibly complex, messy, often painful life experiences. And it taps into what we see a lot in self-help culture, this 
emphasis on personal responsibility and, you know, the almost mythical power of forgiveness to solve everything. Right. Like forgiveness is a magic bullet. But it feels like that kind of thinking can oversimplify things, don't you think? Absolutely. While forgiveness can be an incredibly powerful tool for healing, to frame it as the solution to deeply ingrained societal issues, to individual psychological trauma, it's incredibly reductive. It ignores systemic inequalities, the very real ways in which societal structures contribute to these problems. And honestly, it places the burden on women to fix things, to clean up the mess, so to speak, rather than addressing the underlying causes of these issues. Almost like a blame the victim mentality. It's hard not to see it that way. And yeah. this brings us to what I think is the most revealing part of this whole event, the Q&A session. Yeah, the Q&A, this is where things get really real. You know, we've been talking about Peterson's ideas. But now we get to see how they land with an actual audience. Exactly. And it can get a little, well, let's just say it's illuminating. Like there's this one woman, she asked about how to turn a beta male into an alpha male. Oh, wow. So they're actually using his terminology, trying to apply his framework to their own lives. Uh, it's like they're taking his words as gospel. It really shows how these ideas can take root. But then, you know, it's not all straightforward agreement. You have these moments where women push back, challenge Peterson directly. Like, there's this one woman who brings up her own experience with an abusive father. That's so crucial because it disrupts that whole narrative of blaming mothers for everything. It injects some much-needed real-life complexity into the conversation. Right. It highlights that these issues are rarely black and white. There are so many factors at play. Individual choices, societal pressures, family dynamics. It's rarely as simple as Peterson makes it seem. And then it gets even more intense. Another woman, she asks about sexual assault and how that ties back to, well, you probably guessed it, her mother. It's like she's internalized this idea that somehow women are to blame for the violence inflicted upon them. That's the really dangerous territory we enter when we oversimplify these incredibly complex and frankly sensitive issues. When we reduce everything to these simplistic explanations, it risks justifying or even normalizing harmful behavior. It's a lot to unpack, that's for sure. It makes you realize these aren't just abstract ideas we're talking about here. They have real world weight, real consequences. But, you know, even with all the, I don't know, the intensity, what struck me is that the Q&A wasn't just an echo chamber. We heard dissent. We heard women voicing experiences that directly contradicted Peterson's entire worldview. Absolutely. And that, I think, is a really important takeaway. Even within groups drawn to these sorts of messages, there's still room for critical thinking, for challenging the status quo. It highlights the need for ongoing dialogue, for creating spaces where diverse perspectives can be heard. It really has been quite the deep dive. I mean, we started with this, frankly, outlandish conference title, Make Women Great Again. But look where we ended up. We explored traditional gender roles, the appeal of simple solutions to complex problems, and this deeply concerning tendency to blame women for societal issues. It just shows you how powerful ideologies can be, how they shape not just individual beliefs, but entire cultural conversations. And it underscores the vital importance of critical thinking, of actively seeking out diverse perspectives, especially in this age of, you know, information overload. 100 okay. percent. You know, we've covered a lot of ground today, but I think the question that's really sticking with me is why does this kind of messaging resonate with people? Why does it find an audience, even with all its flaws, its potential for harm? What's the draw? It's the million dollar question, isn't it? And I, I don't think there's a single easy answer. Perhaps it offers a sense of certainty, of order in a world that feels increasingly chaotic and unpredictable. Or maybe it provides an outlet for unexamined anxieties, a way to channel frustrations onto a convenient scapegoat. Those are really interesting points. It's definitely something to ponder. It is. And it reminds us that these conversations about gender roles, responsibility, the very meaning of greatness, they're far from settled. They're ongoing dialogues that demand our attention, our willingness to challenge assumptions, and our commitment to understanding the nuances of these complex issues. Well said. And on that note, I think we'll leave our listeners with that thought. We've certainly given everyone a lot to chew on today. Hopefully this deep dive sparks some insightful reflections, maybe even some lively conversations of your own. Remember, keep questioning, keep exploring, keep learning. Until next time.